Welcome to Excelworks video tutorials. The title of this presentation is how to interpolate XY data points in Excel and Google Sheets with the function interpXY. You have graphed some empirical data points. In this presentation we'll show you how you can accurately interpolate your data with interpXY function in both Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets. And how to use interpXY advanced features to work with real-life noisy biased data. Let's begin by introducing the function interpXY. Interpxy takes three required parameters, the x vector coordinates in parameter number one, the corresponding y values vector in parameter number two, and the interpolation point or points in parameter number three. It also takes two additional optional parameters, a set of key and values in parameter number four, which enables you to control the algorithm and improve your interpolation accuracy, and also a set of weights to weigh your data points in parameter number five. InterpXY algorithm is based on splines. Unfortunately, InterpXY is not a standard function in Excel or Google Sheets. To enable InterpXY in your Excel or Google Sheets, you will have to install the Xlab Calculus functions add-in. If you're running Excel on a Windows PC, download and install Xlab 7 from excel-works.com. If you are on an Apple, install Xlab 365 from the Microsoft App Source from your Excel weapon. Click Insert, Get Add-ins, find the Calculus add-in, and click Add. If you are on Google Sheets, install the Calculus Functions add-on from Google Marketplace. To demonstrate in TurboXY, we are going to sample and plot points from a simple function shown here. Next, we will use interpXY to interpolate at the sampled random points, and then we will compare the results with the true values given by f of x. We'll also show you how to switch between linear and cubic interpolation, and how to improve the accuracy of your interpolation near the endpoints. Let's get started with Excel. We will do the demonstration in Excel, although the process is virtually identical in Google Sheets. I started Excel with an empty sheet. We'll start by generating a vector of x values from 0, an increment of 0.2, and all the way to 3. Next, I'm going to evaluate the y values from the formula x times sine x squared. and using autofill to complete the rest of the values. Let me push this down a little bit so we can add some labels. To generate the random values, I will make use of the run function by adding a random value to my uniform x values. and I'll use autofill to generate the rest of the values. The random values I've just generated are live in the sense that they will keep changing each time a cell is accessed. So in order to make use of them, I have to copy their values and paste them as pure numbers. Otherwise, they will continue changing. For example, if I click here, notice how the whole values will change, and we can't make use of them because they're not stationary. I don't need them anymore, so I can simply delete these values. Now I am going to generate the while values associated with these random values using the same formula here, but changing A2 to D2, and again using autofill to complete the rest of the data. So I'll call this random x and corresponding y values. So I'm going to use interp xy to interpolate at these random x values. The first parameter to, x, to interp xy is my x values and corresponding y vector and I'm interpolating at these random x values. 
I happen to be using XLab 365 and I can take advantage of the spell feature here by simply hitting enter and interp XY will compute all the interpolation points and spell into neighboring cells as you see here. So let's now plot the interpolated values versus the true values that I've just computed earlier. So I'm going to select my X values, my true Y values, and my interpolated values, and insert a graph. As you can see from the graph, we are almost overlapping except near the boundary point. Uh, something to notice here is actually the last point is outside my input vector x because my input goes from 0 to 3 and we have a random point outside 3 at 3.3. So the first observation is the interp xy is not really designed to extrapolate, it's designed to interpolate. So you cannot really use it accurately for points outside your input x values. Interp xy uses cubic splines by default. Let's see the difference if we switch to linear splines. So I am going to use optional parameter number 4 and the control key order. with a value of 1 to tell interp xy to use linear splines instead for performing the interpolation. So let's see how that affects the accuracy of our interpolation. You can see now that there are more pronounced errors between our interpolated values and the true values. In the demonstration I did, I used the spell feature to evaluate interp xy at multiple points. However, if you are using xlab 7 on Windows, this spell feature is not available and you will have to run the interp xy function either as an array formula or by using the autofill feature. So let me demonstrate this in Excel directly. I'm back here in Excel. This is my interp xy formula and if I hit enter I'll be using the spell feature and that only works in Excel 365 on Max and Google Sheet. If you are using Excel Lab 7 you will have to run this as an array formula. I'm going first to copy the formula, highlight my output range, place the formula in the formula bar and press Control shift enter As you notice here, Excel places curly brackets around your formula to indicate that this is an array formula. Another option is to use the autofill and I'm going to demonstrate this as well. So this is my formula again. I will evaluate it at just one point. Now before I can use the autofill, I must lock the first two parameters so Excel does not change them. And I do this by using the dollar sign syntax. I'm here locking both the column and the row of each input. Now I can use the autofill to compute the remaining values. Now one thing to keep in mind is the array formula is a lot more efficient. And in fact, this is the recommended way if you are working in Excel Lab 365 or Google Sheets. The reason being if you use the autofill, it will have a performance hit and it will require multiple evaluations at each point, which will tax the server. Next, I will talk about some of the advanced optional features, which, will, which is helpful when dealing with real-life experimental data. Usually, real-life data is unsorted. It may contain duplicates. When you have multiple measured values at the same x value, it could be 
statistically biased, where some measurements are more accurate or significant than others. And it might be noisy or it might have come from a wave-like periodic sample. And there's ways to improve the accuracy of the interpolation. Interp XY handles the unsorted data and the duplicate measurements automatically by, uh, by averaging the measurements at a given X value and sorting the data automatically for you. Let's see what we can do about the other issues. So if your data is biased, you can supply a weight vector in argument number five. And simply you would have to assign weights that reflects the relative importance of your data points. So one is the most important, most significant, and any value less than one is less significant. The weights must be strictly positive. No zero or negative weights are allowed. If your data is noisy and you'd like to filter the noise out before performing the interpolation, you can take advantage of the S factor key in optional parameter number four, and you would supply some value for this key. A zero value implies there is no smoothing, and this is the default behavior. If you supply a large value like 100, then the interpolation will be based on a least squares smoothing curve fit to the data. Boundary conditions. The largest error will occur near or at the endpoints of your data point. There's two ways you can mitigate this. If you know the approximate slopes at your endpoints, supply them using the keywords I slope and E slope in optional parameter number four. And if you know that your data comes from a periodic wave-like set, then you can turn the periodic key value to true also in optional parameter 4 and that will take care of your boundary conditions. In this presentation we have described the interb xy function of the xlab7 calculus functions add-in uh, which contains a dozen other calculus functions for solving a host of calculus problems including integration, differentiation, interpolation, equations and differential equations. If you are interested in any of these problems, visit excel-works.com for examples. Thank you.